Okay, so if <coughs> we look at that in general, we're getting on to the sire piece, is that, you know, people say, oh, God, we picked these bulls, they're, you know, they're, and the next time a proof comes out, that bull falls, and all this kind of stuff, and it gets a bit of negative attention. I mean, uh, Robert, if you're looking at uh, picking a team of bulls, and I understand that you're in the new youth gene Ireland program and so on, you might explain your reckoning just, just around teams. Look, uh, on, the, on the point you made, you're going to take hits with the EBI, like there's bulls that do fall off the scale, mm. but I'll tell you one thing, they don't leave bad cows behind them. That's yeah. the first thing. They're not. They're way higher standard than a stock bull heifer or a bad cow. Tell me your right. really good line, if you remember it well, about your view of that stock bull piece versus the. the well, piece. it's 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 something I, I I said before. I learned it a long time ago. The best stock bull is not as good as the worst AI bull. Okay. And I stick to it as. I, I just couldn't. Well, we're gonna nail. We're gonna nail you to the mast on that one. Well, I'll stand behind it because well, it absolutely. Well, it just. Okay. It just doesn't. You just don't have to think about it. Take. We're all here. We've all put out bull calves that have been tested this year, right? And they've come back. They haven't made it, right? Yeah. So you can imagine the ones that haven't made it that I have seen, right? In my herd, I would take them as decently good calves, right? Okay. Good calves. So you can imagine the ones that have made it, like okay. they have to be better, like so. Any com Michael, yeah, yeah comments on, on, on I, the I, risk in here? I do my own, I'm DIY AI, so I could have up to 17 bulls in the tank every year. Now, to explain, it sounds like a lot of bulls, right? Okay. I'll, I'll pick 10 bulls that I want to use, right? Yeah. And then there's seven bulls that I'll get from the Gene Ireland program, right? But every, I'll, the most I'll pick is 10 straws from each bull. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, the reality is with a 66 or 7 or 8% conception rate, I'll only end up with three or four heifers from any bull at most coming into my herd. So she can be a superstar. She can run the 100 mm -hmm. meters there in, in 11 seconds. I don't, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. she still would be a really good performer. And even if she has issues with, with temperament or something like that, it's only four heifers. It's not going to break my heart like. But still, I'm spreading the risk across the herd. And the other thing, which was brought up earlier on, it's very important as well that you don't fall in love with any particular sire. You know what I mean? So have a good range of bulls in the tank. Have a good even team. Like you know what I mean? Mm. Have a good range. And also as well, if you're into more into depth, try and avoid bulls bred by the same sire. Like uh, you know, you get every year we get a, a bull that breeds a whole lot of new bulls, right? Uh, young bulls onto the scene. Yeah. Try and only use one or two of them. Spread the risk. Okay, spread so, it out. so spreading the risk is a message. It's really important. Okay. We, we, we've been fortunate enough. We've been doing it for the last 10 or 12 years out of sheer interest. And it served me well. I never fell in love with any bull because I thought it was a risk, a, a risk in the overall scheme of things. And it's really served our herd well in the long run that we don't get huge fluctuations now. Because George, who's very good at the figures, when you do the probability on it, yeah. if you use a range of bulls, the probability is very, very small. And you're up to 95%. That maybe a little bit for us. I suppose the big, the big thing, Martin, to remember is that on average about th a third of the calves born on any individual farm nationally are sired by one bull. And that's, that's too big a risk to spread. So we need to use mm -hmm. biggish teams. 100 cows and heifers use about seven bulls. 200 cows and heifers use about 14 bulls. You won't go too far astray. And use them evenly is the other thing. So from the breeding advisor's point of view, is that part of your role? Because some people are not going to have the confidence to go and look at this. The, this is a big chunk of work that they're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. Is that part of your role as a breeding advisor that you can look at this for them? I think it's part of a role as a breeding organization. Okay. Um, because, and this is why um, the Fresh program is so attractive because there's, a, there's a 9, 12 bulls in the Fresh program. They're changed every day. There's different pedigrees there, etc. And they're all selected on production sub-index and fertility mm -hmm. sub-index. And the, the, farmers, the farmer unknowns to himself is using a whole uh, spread of bulls, spreading his risk as he goes through the breeding season, unknowns to himself. So to me, all of this, like these guys are a credit to, you know, they're an example to, to any farmer in Ireland, but yes. an awful lot of guys, have no, I'm not saying they have no interest in it, but they either haven't got the technical expertise or they haven't got the, the time to put into selecting bulls. Absolutely. So yeah. we do it for them. We do, we, we plan out the, what, fresh, fresh, what bulls are going on the fresh program and we do all the sire advice for them. And the, sire, the key thing about sire advice, in my view, more than anything else, and I agree with Owen in terms of, it's, it's, it's like, uh, High production to low production cows, except nice complementary matings, but the key thing is inbreeding. Yeah. And, and okay. the sire advice will do the inbreeding for you. And, you'll, and, and I would say to you, with a lot of confidence, just do them two things fresh program, sire advice, and you'll be, breed a hell of a profitable herd of cows over a few years. Okay. Just, sorry, just to support yeah. what Seamus is saying, the, the only thing then that that farmer has to do is pick out the cows that he doesn't want to put in calf to exactly. AI. Yeah. So when the farmer, okay. when he the AI technician yeah. comes into the yard, he, 
spend that two minutes is all he has to do yeah. or she has to do to say, well, that one gets a beef one. No matter how much more he's in, she gets a beef and that's it. Yeah. Okay. And that's the most okay. important and thing we that you do. to the beef. Just on one thing, we'll say for the guy that does want to breed his own replacements that hasn't been doing it, yeah. there's two big things that, that both Michael and George have said. One thing Michael has said is hugely important. If you breed your replacements in your first three mm -hmm. to four weeks, mm -hmm. you're automatically breeding your most fertile cow on your farm. <laughs> So that replacement is going to be the most fertile. And if you're a farmer that wants to, we'll say, eliminate whatever each of us have said, that's the bad cow, we'll say, or the cow that has a slight health problem, you eliminate her out. <laughs> now, George mentioned 150 of an EBI cutoff point. <coughs> For a lot of herds, that might be their better cows. Yep. Mm. And there is, there is huge bulls out there for a 150 EBI cow that will improve her. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if you're, if you're a herd that's concerned about biosecurity and you don't want to go buying your replacement stock, if you can take out your, 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 your cows, you don't want to breed legs, others, temperament. And if you can breed for the first three to four weeks, you're automatically breeding your most fertile cow yep. and breed her to your high EBI bull, whether it's fresh or whatever, mm -hmm. you mm. will, in a couple of years, make huge gains it's in your herd. Okay. And it, it is to do that. It's, it's, it's not to be tempted. And Michael said about the, the falling in love with a bull. Don't fall in love with a cow in your herd and breed her three or four times yeah, to get I, a heifer off her because yeah. she's not a fertile yeah. cow. Sure, yeah. sure, absolutely. So now, yeah, we, we've one important group of animals that we haven't spoken about. It's our heifers. heifers yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. absolute lunacy. The best genetics that you have in mm. your herd are your heifers. Mm. Breed, like if you, you're the best animal you're going to get is a heifer out of a heifer. Now, God rest my dad, this was a policy we had. We always bred our heifers to the best stock we possibly could. And this is what grew, this is what made exponential leaps for really us. really speeds it up, Michael. It speeds yeah. the whole thing up. So we're going to go back to the start of the conversation here. If you have compact cabin, you've moved from that. By the time you get to May, when you really have to focus on your heifers to get them in calf, you're no longer rearing calves. You're pretty much, mm. all your calves at this stage are either sold or they're, they're reared. Mm. You've already mm. moved on to a very important uh, 20 days. Whether you do synchronization, fixed time AI, or you watch them as, the, as they're coming bull with, with vasectomized bulls, which I highly recommend for mm. heifers. You give them one opportunity to go and calf the AI. They're up to size. You've all the work done before that. There is no reason with heifers that you shouldn't be getting 80% conception rate to heifers if the AI is done correctly. And thankfully, we're getting it every year. And there's no reason why Super. not. Just, just, just a quick round. round. Breeding heifers, are you sync, vasectomized? How, how, how do you look at At home, I'm, synch I'm synchronizing. And synchronizing. I would say in the, uh, the one of the biggest improvements or developments that's happened over the last three or four years is the success of synchronization program on heifers. Okay. Not, not, and I agree completely with Michael in terms of your breeding and your best genetics, but for okay. me as a farmer, it just takes all the, 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 the pain in the ass workload out of getting heifers in and out to the item. And in the next panel, we'll kind of explore yeah. synchronization and so on. Yourself, Robert, what's your system with your heifers? I just serve them as they come. They're, they, they, I bring them home to the yard to the yard, and they stay at home for the three weeks. Then I have teaser bulls with them, and I still AI them through mm. like to the finish because okay. I don't have a bull on the farm. Michael? It might sound very workload, but I, I actually AI them uh, natural service for 20 days. They're, no, they're on an out farm, right? So I have two <laughs> bulls with them. With uh, chin balls on them, two vasectomized sorry, well, two yeah, bulls yeah, right, with chin yeah. balls on them, two different colours. Trust me, when they're bull and you spot them from Mars, like you know what I mean. We only go to see okay, them. You, you know, you only see yep, them. I only service. see them once a day at ten o'clock in the day. By the time we've all the work done, we get up there at ten o'clock, and it takes me maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Well, the reality is that's thirty hours over the year. Mm. Mm. Like yeah, that's well all it is for twenty days. It uh, it it pays me back multifold, and it okay. makes no and and that's why also as well. The other trick of the trade is with the vasectomized bulls, let them off two or three weeks before the breeding season starts. Don't let them off the day you're starting, because everything will be bull. You yeah, understand yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so yeah, get them relaxed, yeah, get them yeah, settled get down, settled put the chin balls on them the day before you start. And it's simple to pick them up, bull. It's okay. no, you'll have no okay. problem whatsoever. Oh, it's very yeah, we're, we're very, very similar. We, we do go one step further, as in we, we put the scratch cards on the heifers. <coughs> we put the, the spray on glue scratch card on the heifer three weeks beforehand. Mm. So when we go to see them every day, we just write them down in the notebook. When we start breeding, we don't need to have all the heifers in the one bunch. Gotcha. So the first 10 that we're bulling, we'll put with the vasectomized bull. And the one trick we do, and we find it hugely helpful, the day she's served, we don't put her back with them again. She goes to a different paddock. So your, your vasectomized bull is only with the heifers that are coming in bulling. So the day she is served, she's moved to a different paddock. Okay, and that way... How many groups have you got then? Um, so we'll, yeah. we'll, we, we would only have... 
we, we could bring half them home or we could bring them all yeah. home. It doesn't matter. But what we do then is, the most important thing is the day she served, move her somewhere else. Okay. Because when you're going okay. to a paddock the following day, you're only looking at a vasectomized bull with a marked heifer. Mm. So she's not, she's not the, the one that was done yeah. the day before, the day before is gone. Okay. So so just, some to, just something I, just I do at the end now, in, yeah. when you have, the, we'll say, the middle of the heifers, the, we'll say 15 or 20 of them gone, I'll put them with the cows. With the milking cows, Remaining just ones. no. Put them, put them with the milking cows, and they'll come. I, I guarantee you. The only heifers after a few days, it's hardship for a few days. But after a few days, the only heifers that'll ever be in the connecting yard are the ones the bullet. The okay, rest so of them th it's really back. interesting, guys, yeah. because all of these slightly different systems, right? But the one thing I think for anyone listening to it is. There's lots of ways of skinning yeah. skin this cat. And a lot of people get, oh my God, I have to synchronize him. Oh my God, I have to do this, whatever. But there's actually, you can really make this suit your system. Is, is, is well, the reality, right? like the, all I would say is we have them on an out farm now. It's very handy if you had them at home. We used to have them at home until home got maximized, right? So they're on an out farm. And that's not stopping me AI you know. So that's the bottom line. It's yeah, not well, stopping, and it's not stopping me getting yeah. a successful conception rate. And so there's ways and means of getting the heifers in calf. And if, for me, whether you do, Fixed time AI, whether you inject them after seven, eight, nine days, whatever you do, if, or you go the full 20 days to get, or 21 days, whatever it is. If that length of time is not worth the investment in the long run, I don't know what you're doing in your business to make the thing work better and make more money. Okay.